This is how you can build an AI powered no code app using the very latest AI model to be released, which as of today is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And it's taking the AI community by storm. You only got to go over and look on Twitter slash X to see um, how people are comparing it to OpenAI's GPT 4.0. And also alongside the current offering from Anthropic, uh, we're seeing that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the intelligence. You know, be wary. There's, there's no, um, there's no numbers on the Y axis, but it's saying that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is more intelligent than Claude 3 Opus. So let's dive right in and build ourselves a no code app. And it's only going to take us five, 10 minutes to do so. Uh, so I, um, I'm using bubble.io. That is, uh, my no code, um, platform of choice uh, and let's start with a blank page here so what do we need in order to create an AI tool well at the very least we need an input so I'm going to say a multi-line input and drag that in now this is not going to be a lesson about designing in bubble I'm going to do the design process very quick it's not going to be responsive meaning it's not going to adapt to different page sizes uh, if you were wanting to do that check out our videos on um, container layout rows and columns that's the way you should do it but i'm going to do it nice and quick here and then we just need a button like i say going to make this really rough and then we need somewhere where our response uh, comes back so let's now actually dive into the ai part uh so we need to go into the uh anthropic uh api reference and then go to messages create message and this gives us the template for how we need to lay out our data going from our bubble app our no code platform to anthropic and then we'll get that amazing ai response back uh, so make sure you've got a c url or c curl selected up top here uh, because first of all we need to know our endpoint this is where the data is being sent so i'm going to copy that to my clipboard uh, and then I go back into my bubble app and I go to plugins. And I, this is an app that I've created loads of bubble tutorials for it from in the past. Uh, so we just go onto API connector and you don't, if you don't have that installed, uh, click add plugins at the top here. Uh, and so these are all services that I've integrated in with in the past. And so I'm just going to say add another API and I'm going to call this Claude. Then it needs to be authenticated because it's a paid product. It's very cheap, uh, but I still need to know, uh, I still need to instruct Anthropic uh, who to charge for the API calls that I make. And the way that we do that, if we go back to create message, is in the header of our call, uh, we need to send our API key. So I'm going to copy that because this is our key label. Uh, go back in. And then I say authenticate authentication rather uh, private key and header now most commonly for apis the key name will be authorization but anthropic want us to use x api key as uh, the uh, key name i'm then going to fill in the key uh, value but i'm going to come back to that because that's you, know, you should treat it as a password uh, so i'm going to fill that in and come back in this video uh, what else do we need to put in the header we need to put anthropic version So I'm going to say a shared header. And this is so that I can create multiple calls which all share the same headers. They share the same authorization and they share the same like mandatory uh, parameters. So I've got to put this one here. Okay. Uh, and then there is one more here, content type application JSON. Now, actually, because of a recent update, Bubble automatically includes that in. You can include it yourself, but this is the default unless you overwrite it. Now, the body of what we send is here, or the data section. So I'm going to copy all of that inside of the quote marks and then expand here. And this is my API call. So this is an action that I can take in a bubble workflow. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, ask AI. Now, I said it's an action, so I'm going to change this to action. That makes it a node or like an element in uh, the workflow builder. We're going to come right onto that in a moment. Uh, and then uh, it needs to be post. How do I know that it's post? Well, it sometimes would say, there we go. It needs to be post just there. And then I'm going to paste in the body. Now, I've jumped around a bit because the endpoint, which I'll take back here, 
needs to go into here. Okay, uh, so let's just work out what's going on here. First of all, we've got the model and uh, it, the model is automatically filled with Anthropic's most impressive model by their own standards, their most intelligent one, which is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Uh, then we've got max tokens. This is saying how large should the response be? Uh, and this can go all the way up to, if you look through the documentation, it's all laid out, max tokens. Okay, different models have got different max tokens. You can go and investigate that. Um, but we'll leave that as as uh, uh, 1024. And then we've got the messages section. So this is the bit that I'm most interested in because this is where we actually send the message to the AI. And we're just going to do something really simple like ask the AI question. So I want to make this a field that is dynamic and I can fill in a workflow. Because at the moment, all of this is static. Uh, so how do I do that? Well, Bobble tells me here that I can use triangle brackets to add in dynamic values. So I'm simply going to say uh, question. Notice that I delete the speech marks. Now, JSON syntax, JSON syntax is unforgiving. Uh, you'll get an error if you put a piece of punctuation in the wrong place. Uh, so I'm going to return the speech marks back in here and I'll say, um, what is the most powerful LLM question mark? Okay, notice I have the speech marks at the end. Now, this isn't going to be private because it isn't private data that I as the app uh, creator am supplying to Anthropic. It is actually data that the user provides. So it isn't private from my users. What I do want to ensure is private is my API key and by my marking it as private key and header, I'm doing that. So before I can run this and test it, I just need to fill in my API key. I filled in my key. I got that from my Anthropic account. Uh, and so now I can test it and I need to initialize it because I need to teach Bubble what to expect in return so that I can know the structure of that data and use it and display it on the page. So let's initialize our call. Now we're waiting and it's middle of the road model in terms of speed. That was very quick. Uh, and we get back a some data here. I just popped open more of the expression here. As an AI assistant, I don't actually have up-to-date data. Yeah, that's fine. That's what we'd expect to get back. So I'm going to click Save because this is teaching Bubble of the structure of what comes back. Uh, so let's click Save there. Now I can go back to Design because we're going to plug the connection we've made in the Bubble API connector into this page in our Bubble app. So let's say rename this and we'll say ask AI. And then uh, let's add in a workflow. So I'm on the button and I click add workflow. And then I find in plugins the workflow that I just created. So I can search for Claude and it says ask AI. Now, if you're seeing something different, that's because uh, I've named this API connection Claude and I've named this particular action as ask AI. So whatever you named it, you'd find it in that menu as long as you've successfully initialized the call. Let's go back to workflows. Uh, and I now need to insert the data from my multi-line input value. And notice that I've commented about the speech marks. So the speech marks have to be there in order for the, uh, the JSON syntax to be correct and so you, that you don't get an error. Now I've removed the, in fact, let's go back a step. Let's go back a step. Okay, it's expecting it in this format with the speech marks around it. Uh, so by selecting the multi-line input, let's get that back again. Okay, there are no speech marks there unless I type the speech marks into the input. That's not great for user experience. Uh, so I'm going to add a text modifier here called formatted as JSON safe. And we've got whole videos covering this topic, but effectively at the very start, that puts the speech marks back around it, making it JSON safe, but it also means that it accounts for any additional punctuation. Look, if we look back at our uh, our JSON object here, uh, we've got speech marks, we've got colons, we've got square brackets, uh, we've got curly brackets, all of that is part of the code. But when we send text that might include similar punctuation, we need to declare 
and the, the coding term is escape that punctuation to declare that it's actually part of text and not part of code. Well, thankfully, Bubble has this formatted as JSON safe. So that's just going to make everything safe and wrap it in the speech marks. Now, our next step is that we want to display it because this is when Bubble sends our question. And we're now at this point here waiting for an answer. So uh, I'm on the display here. Now, there are many ways that you can approach this. I'm going to use something called custom states, which is like temporary storage. If the user was refreshed the web page, the data is gone, but it's perfect for this demo. So you can add a custom state to any element in Bubble. I've just got in the habit of adding it to page uh, because then I don't lose where I've, where I've placed it. So I'm going to say uh, AI response. You could name it anything you like, and it's going to be of type text and click create and then I want to refer to that here so I go to my page which I've enabled I've labeled Claude 35 and there is my custom state okay so now this text box is going to show any text that I set in that custom state so the only thing left to do now is to set state and find our state Okay, and now find the data returns from the AI. Now we can go back to the API connector, reinitialize it to really check where it comes in. Basically within the structure, we just need that one particular bit that's actually got the reply. Uh, but I, having done this many, many times, just know that it's in content. Now the content could contain a list of different options as a reply. The, that's the N value, the parameter, which you'd see in the API, um, in the Claude uh, API, uh, reference page. We're not asking it to generate three possible responses. We're just asking for one because we've not set n n defaults to one. We've not set n to be a higher number than that. So we just say first item. It only returns one item, but it knows that it's a list. We just say first item. And then we say uh, text. And that's what's come back. So now we are ready to test it. So here's my blank page. Here's my input. Uh, so let's ask it a question it might well know the answer to. Let's say where are the next Olympic, I've spelled that wrong, but AI is quite forgiving in that sense, uh, games being held. Hit loads of typos in there. So I've clicked the button and Bubble is now waiting for a response and here they come back. So we get this amazing AI response saying that the next Summer Olympics is going to be held in Paris and it's only a month or so away. So there you go. That is how you can add in an AI, uh, AI, you can build, in fact, an AI powered no code app. And if you made it this far and you want to learn more about building apps with Bubble, which is an amazing AI, uh, AI and no code tool, click the link down in the description to find out more and to join our no code builder community and access all of our previous video content. Music